Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and in this video, we're going to give you five tips for doing Walt Disney World on the cheap. Or at least cheaper. Cheaper, yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you can do it on the cheap. Tip number one, stay somewhere besides Fort Wilderness. You'll look around me, you'll notice we're not in Fort Wilderness. That's because this very nice RV campground is about $120 a night less expensive than a full hookup site at Fort Wilderness. But here we have full hookups, nice concrete parking pad. And we're only about 15 minutes away from the parks, so it's not really that bad of a drive. And $120 a day to save is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you're planning on coming down here and staying for a week or two. I mean, for us, this is about a $2,000 savings to stay here. Now, it's not as nice as Fort Wilderness. The sites aren't quite as nice. Uh, not a whole lot of trees. There is no wildlife uh, walking through the park. Although this being Florida, we have seen some exotic birds walking through the campground. Who's a pretty bird? They've got nice facilities here. There's a bathhouse right behind our camper and we're paying roughly 30 bucks a night to stay here. For wilderness this time of year, 150 bucks a night. So do the math. So obviously we're driving ourselves into the Disney parks since we're staying off Disney property, but it really doesn't seem to take that much longer than it would if we were driving to the parks from Fort Wilderness. So we just drove back from the park. It's just after midnight. We closed down Magic Kingdom the night and that's how long it took us to get to our campground. Just over 20 minutes. Now of course at Fort Wilderness, you have access to the Disney transportation and you're not gonna have that when you're staying on property. However, in our experience, Disney transportation can be very slow. If you take the bus system, sometimes to get from your you know, RV space at Fort Wilderness to the park can take you about an hour. Basically, I would rather be in my own vehicle in air conditioning, not having to wait on anybody else. I can change the radio station, we can have snacks in our car, keep a cooler in your car with some drinks or snacks, whatever. To me, I much prefer that over waiting on a Disney bus. The only park that that's not true for is the Magic Kingdom because at Fort Wilderness you can take a boat from Fort Wilderness to Magic Kingdom. So that's really the only park where you're going to miss being at Fort Wilderness, but we don't really go to Magic Kingdom all that frequently, so it's not that big of a deal for us. Another pretty nice advantage from a cost saving standpoint of staying off property is you're probably going to be close to some grocery stores. For example, near this RV park, there's a big Publix grocery store and you can go in there and buy your groceries. I mean, the grocery store is literally across the street from our park. So you're really not at the mercy of Disney, frankly, with its proprietary stores and those prices. As you drive back and forth to Disney, you're gonna go past some, shall we say tacky tourist areas where there are a lot of souvenir shops. You know, some of these places might be a place where you can shop and get inexpensive souvenirs. I uh, can't really vouch for the quality of the souvenirs in a lot of these places. This t-shirt is cool, but is it $37 cool? No, but if you just want a shirt with Mickey Mouse on it, there are a lot of cheaper options than buying a shirt in Disney. The local Walmarts and Targets both have lots of Disney wear to choose from. Walmart has a bigger selection than Target. They also have a lot of knickknacks like the little bubble blowers and spinning light things that they charge ridiculous amounts of money for inside Disney. You can buy those cheap at Walmart and like CVS and Walgreens and those kind of places. So if you have a small child in your group that you know will want those things, you could always buy one, stick it in your bag, and then surprise them with it when you get into Disney and they will never know the difference. <laughs> 
So if you come to Orlando and you want to get a good deal on actual Disney merchandise, this is the place to come. It's the Disney Character Warehouse and it's at an outlet mall. They basically have stuff from the parks that I guess has been discontinued or no longer made. And they don't just have it from the parks in Orlando. They have it from Disneyland in California. One of the things I noticed that I found very interesting is that some of the merchandise came from other Disney theme parks overseas. For example, the Shanghai Disney Park. It's very hit or miss, I think, on what you find. There are some things in there that are a great deal, some things not so much. Some of the stuff is marked down well more than 50%. And so you, you can find some nice bargains here if they happen to have in stock something you're interested in. I mean, there's, yeah. there's also a lot of sort of like weird peculiar little items. I'm sure it gets picked over depending on the time of year that you're here, but if you really want some good deals, it might be worth checking out. Normally, I don't buy souvenirs at all, but I can't resist a deal, and I like to buy souvenirs that are functional, so I got a coffee mug from Disney California Adventure. We've actually been to Disney California Adventure, and the other functional souvenir I got was a pair of Mickey Mouse boxers. Now, ladies, I will be modeling these on the pay-per-view site. <laughs> it's gonna look good. Perfect. Ready for fun? Yep. yep. Got it. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you're staying off property and you come in to park. You're going to have to pay a parking fee unless you're an annual pass holder. More on that later. But the parking fee is like 20 bucks a day. Yeah. So that is the one downside. You pay it once and you can take Disney transportation to other parks from whichever park that you park at. So today we're here in Forgotten Florida seeking out adventures in those places that often get overlooked. Little two-lane highways with roadside soap bubble vendors. <laughs> the only way that I know to save on tickets is if you plan on spending more than 10 days within a 12-month period of time inside the Walt Disney World parks. It's actually cheaper for you to buy an annual pass. And when you buy an annual pass, there are perks that come with it. You get free parking at the parks, so if you stay off property, you can come park at Disney for free with your annual pass, which is what we have done this visit. If you're a Florida resident, you get even bigger discounts, and in fact, you don't even have to be a full-time Florida resident. If you are a part-time or seasonal Florida resident, you can get a Florida resident annual pass, which is what we have done this year. We actually bought their weekday select annual pass, so our pass is only good Monday through Friday. We can't come on the weekends, which we wouldn't care to do anyway. And you can't come during the height of summer. You can't come the week of Christmas or the week of New Year's or I believe the week of Thanksgiving, which those are times we wouldn't come anyway. But that ticket was cheaper than buying a three-day park hopper ticket. So that's what happens when you have the rights to Indiana Jones, but you don't have the rights to Harrison Ford's face. One thing to remember about an annual pass is that you do get discounts. 20% off merchandise, most merchandise, and then 10% or 15% off certain dining. So you just look in your little booklet that they give you when you get your annual pass and you'll know where you get your discounts. I know some of you guys who don't have Mickey Mouse tattoos will find that Disney makes you want to drink heavily. Don't do it, my friends. I bought this for you guys to act as an example of what you should not do at Disney World. Do not buy a beer here. This beer is basically 10 bucks. I've heard of craft beer. This is crazy beer, I don't know. If you shop around, you can find deals on beer at Disney. I only paid $8.50 for this beer. Really seems like quite a bargain. Here's my $5 beer. And no, I have not turned into Andre the Giant. You gotta just sip it. Sip it, make it last. A bottled water here will cost you $3. 
or you can just ask for a cup of water and it's free. Any place that serves food will give you a cup of water for free. You don't even have to buy food. You just go up to the window and ask for a cup of water. You get a kid's cup with a lid and it is full of nice cold ice water. It's about four dollars worth of beer right there, my friends. <laughs> Alright, what are you going to have? I want the wedge salad uh -huh. and onion rings. That's what you're going to have for your dinner? Yes. OMG. Don't tell me you're hungry later. Okay. I would like the sampling of mom's favorite recipe. Put the toy away! Hey, <laughs> that's kids yelling. See? See what you did? The theme of this restaurant is the 50s primetime cafe and it's supposed to be like you're back in a kitchen in the 1950s so it's all these Formica top counters and the old school televisions and all the waiters and waitresses are like your aunt or your uncle or your grandma or your mom and so they're very big on scolding you and telling you to take your elbows off the table. They'll tell you to put away your toys, put away your electronics. They'll scold you if you don't set the table properly or if you don't chew with your mouth closed. So be prepared to be scolded when you come in here. She'll crack down on me. She sees me playing with this camera. I'm, I'm putting time out. I might be putting time out. I might have to like put my nose up against the wall. I'm not joking. This is serious. If she sees me with this camera, we're all in trouble. You did it. No, you both did it. She did it. Do you want to go stand with your nose against the wall? No, ma'am. Then knock it off. This is one of the restaurants where we get an annual pass holder discount, so you get a 10% discount off your meal. Doesn't include alcoholic beverages, but still 10% is better than nothing. <laughs> so one other way to save some money at Disney is anytime you eat at a sit-down restaurant, split an entree, because usually the entree sizes are pretty substantial. And so we'll usually split an entree and then get like a salad and an appetizer. And between that, there's plenty of food for the two of us, and it's usually a lot cheaper than getting two entrees. Alright guys, so there you have it. That's at least five tips for saving money while you're spending it like a madman <laughs> in Walt Disney World. But we want to throw this out to you guys. If you have any kind of suggestions for the Loloho community about how to not go bankrupt visiting Disney World, Please chime in, post a comment. Yeah, and if you'd like this video, please hit the subscribe button, give us a like, share it with your friends. And until next time, lo lo ho. Lo lo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Now, if you really want to save money on food, you smuggle a peanut butter sandwich in your shorts. <laughs> now, sometimes you will get hit with some secondhand soap bubbles down here. Just be prepared for that. Don't inhale the soap bubbles. Look, guys, there's still about 50 cents worth of beer left in there.